Fordham. Do you make a change or do you stick with what you have? Uh, I think you stick with the zone because you know you're you're up by three. I, I don't want to foul. I don't want to stop the clock. I'm willing to give up a three. You know, some people say foul in this situation, but you know, you got to practice this. You got to know what to do and foul on the floor for two. Comes into Christian Thompson. Thompson, the deep three. On the rebound, here's Fats Russell. He launches, cannot hit it as time expires, and Fordham emerges with the win on the road. So Fordham wins it in overtime, and now for Ben Braun and our entire crew, I'm Steve Schlanger, a thriller here in Kingston, and now we say so long from Rhode Island, where Fordham wins it over Rhode Island on the road. Sold out University of Dayton Arena. It is a sold out whiteout. The crowd has been quieted somewhat after VCU went on a 16 nothing run, but a three point play the hard way, the old fashioned way by Josh Cunningham has Dayton back down 11 at this point in a big Atlantic 10 matchup. Rich Lerner alongside Blaine Fowler. Well, in a game that has championship implications, NCAA tournament implications, VCU has come out the aggressor in this ballgame. They've been attacking the rim. They've gotten some open three looks that they've knocked down. And Dayton has been on the heels up till the last two times down the floor. Mike Sell has matched his season average nine points already, and that's a positive development for Dayton. Well, you'd have to call Mike Sell the MVP for Dayton to this point in the game, but everybody's an MVP for VCU as Sims knocks down a three from the corner. And they're, they're putting on a attack the rim clinic and a three-point shooting clinic in this Michael one. Michael Sims, the silencer with six early and the turnover by Obi Toppin. Boy, that is a beautiful take by Isaac Van. He can really play. He's a transfer from Maine. He had a 30-point game against St. John's in November. Averages 11 per game. Lead back up to 14 for the VCU Rams. They've won five in a row, playing their best basketball of the year. And a foul on the floor. VCU is likely, likely an NCAA tournament team. And this is how it has been. VCU getting it out, moving it down the floor. Van, without numbers, taking it to the rack as VCU is out in front and in command. Over the last decade, VCU and Dayton, the two best programs in the Atlantic 10. VCU with a win today moves back into a tie with Davidson, which beat St. Joe's last night with Steph Curry back in the building in North Carolina. Rich Boner alongside Blaine Fowler. What's the difference so far? Well, VCU has been on attack, and they've got Dayton on their heels. They're playing well on the defensive end, but it's on the offensive end where they've really played on attack. They're knocking down threes. They're 5 of 10 already in this ballgame. Remember, this is a team that on the season shoots 29% from that three-point line. One of the worst in the country. In the 300s in terms of ranking, but they've come out here, and you know what? They've been taking better threes during this win streak, and that three-point percentage is creeping up. Crutcher misses. They can't afford many. Down 14. The VCU shooting a blistering 65% from the field to start this game, 13 to 20. Isaac Van baseline, no. Rebound inside. Gilmore, yes, off the bench. Big Mike Gilmore, 6'10", senior. He is the nephew of the great artist Gilmore. Nice finish, left hand by Jalen Crutcher. They need to get Crutcher going. Uh, he, he's their best shooter. They need to get him going inside and outside. And if Dayton's going to get back in this, it's going to have to come on this end of the floor. They're going to have to get VCU to turn the ball over and get some easier buckets. Good ball movement, Dayton, or rather VCU, and Jenkins misses a wide open three. Jalen Crutcher away with it. We see Toppin on the screen being really careful not to move with two fouls and with a lack of depth. With the absence of Trey Landers, he's, he has got to be careful out there, and they use him to set a lot of ball screens. Seven on the shot clock. Crutcher was stripped. 
quick, quick hands that time. Yeah, good Deontay Jenkins. That's right. And on the drive, that's Isaac Van. He's fouled, and he'll shoot a couple. That foul was on Dwayne Cohill. Obi Toppin takes a seat. Davis back in the game. ECU is an outstanding young head coach in Mike Rhodes. His second season there. He was an assistant under Shaka Smart before taking the head job at Rice and breathing life into that program. 34-19, VCU in black. Dayton, the home team in white. And they're just out of sync. And this VCU team, they, they overplay the passing lanes. They extend that defense well beyond the three. They've got quick hands. That's what they do. They deny and disrupt. But there's Ryan Mikesell, who's been their best player so far. Put back. And the Flyers are down 34-21. 11 points for Mikesell. Marcus Evans tried to get Mobley and threw it away. VCU number one in the conference in multiple defensive categories, scoring defense, three-point field goal percentage defense. Yeah, you don't think you're going to come out because what they do is they, they extend their D. They extend the D full court. They get you out of rhythm. When you get an open three, you rush that shot and you miss. And so that is a, a fantastic defensive basketball team whose offense has done nothing but get better over the last month. They are number one in the country in three-point defense. You saw that team shooting just 25% from beyond the arc. And Cohill seems rattled early. Gilmore. Deep three, no. And rebound to Davis. Dayton would love nothing more than for VCU to fall in love with the three and settle for threes. And when they're making threes, they're inside-out type threes. Come in on a drive and kick. When they're just pulling up for threes, that's exactly what Dayton would like them to do. VCU can take you out of your rhythm. They play hard. Crutcher. Boy, did they need that. Needed it in a big, big way. VCU by 10. The Atlantic 10 all-rookie team last year, 22 starts, and picked up where he left off. They need him to play great. And that's a travel right there on Marcus Evans. And now Eugene Arena is coming to life. This, you've got to get this crowd back into it with plays. This play will get it going. Cohill coming and kicking it to the outside. Same thing for Dayton. Same rules apply. They're better at shooting threes when it comes from inside out. Crutch around the drive and the kick. And that gives this crowd something to cheer about. And then a defensive stop. And now all of a sudden, this crowd clad in white is back into it. Dayton has turned it over already eight times. VCU five. VCU bench outscoring Dayton. They don't have much of a bench. They just don't have the numbers, but it's 16 nothing. Mike Self, good move inside. Wow. That and big Mike step Self through. Playing great. That was a beautiful move with a step through. And I love that he was aggressive. He is having a fantastic basketball game. If it weren't for Mike Self, Dayton wouldn't be in this thing at all. Evans pulls up, in and out, no good. Mike Sell has it. And Dayton only down by eight. <laughs> Sloppy turnover by Crutcher. Oh, what a block by Mike Sell. He's doing it at both ends. The seven nothing Dayton run. Cohill, good look to Davis. Corner pull up, no. Ball out of bounds. 
belongs to Dayton. So Dayton making a little bit of a move. Boy, and it's Mikesville that's getting it done. What a move on the offense, Ben, but watch how he brings this crowd to his feet. A defensive block in transition. Mikesville bringing his team back into this thing. We got a great one here in Dayton. Missed the old Broad Street Bullies. Hound Dog Kelly, Schultz, Bernie Perron, Rick McLeish. There's some great hockey in the state of Pennsylvania through the years. Battle here, VCU leading by eight. They were up by 16. What's changed? Well, we talked about the defense of VCU a bit ago. Offensively, Dayton ranks first in the A-10 in scoring average and assists and field goal percentage. And, and they got it going here in the last little bit to close this gap. And now got that field goal percentage up to 52.4%. Just two of six from three, but they've been much more efficient the last four times down the floor offensively. VCU was up by 16. And Davis throws it away. Leave, you leave your feet, you get in the air without a place to go. That's what happens. You've, if you're going to leave your feet, you have to know where you're going to go with the basketball before you do that. And VCU, they missed their last two. They started out on fire five of ten from three. They missed their last two three attempts. And as mentioned, they, they weren't inside-out threes. VCU needs to get back to what got in the lead, and that's playing on attack and getting to that rim. There it is. Inside, that's a really nice feed, but Douglas couldn't finish. And Jenkins misses, but there's Douglas. He is really aggressive. Physical inside. play. Physical, physical, the 6'8". Sophomore forward getting it done inside, uh, keeping that ball alive. And th that's how VCU got the big lead was being more physical and being the aggressor inside. Dayton already with 10 turnovers. And remember, VCU forces 16 per game. Muscling inside is Josh Cunningham. Senior leader, averages 14 a game for Dayton. More of that is a recipe for good things for Dayton. So right now for Dayton, it's just a case of try to hang around for intermission. Don't let it get away. Michael Sims, no. And beating him on the offensive glass. Sims and got hit in the face. When, when you get stops and you're trailing, then you got to turn around and block out. You got to find a guy and, and clear the offensive or the defensive glass. Isaac Van drives and another offensive rebound and an easy putback for VCU. Too easy once again. When you think about it, twice on the same trip down the floor, Dayton gets a stop but can't clear the defensive glass. And extra opportunities, second chance points. VCU. Yeah, VCU with seven offensive boards already in this ball game and just three for Dayton. So four extra possession opportunities for the Rams. Seven on the shot clock. Cunningham goes to work. And let's see who the foul is on. Maybe he might have pushed off with that left hand, but no, it's foul on VCU. Coming up on the U.S. Bank NBC Sports Report, my pal Jimmy Roberts in studio, Notre Dame, Virginia in a tight one. And by the way, VCU gave Virginia a good game, didn't win. Kansas hosting West Virginia and Michigan back on track in the Big Ten. Cunningham misses the foul shot. Policelli gave Mike Sell just a quick breather. Mike Sell's back on the court. And Cunningham, a, a captain, thir third year as a captain. This is the one area he struggles, just 57.8% from the free throw line. And uh, these are important buckets when you're behind and that clock's not moving. you got to accumulate points and make free throws. Mike Sell back in the game. He had a little bit of a breather, and he's been a catalyst for a lot of good for the Flyers in this first half. VCU by nine. Boy, Dariante Jenkins, good he stroke. Is, he is playing well. Tonight. VCU by nine, or rather by 12. And Jenkins now with 11 points, three of four from three. Well, and 32% for the season for Jenkins, and he's shooting it like he's a 50% three-point shooter with a lot of confidence. Crutcher has to get moving. Four, and there's a turnover. Just a poor play. 
Jenkins, a floater at the horn doesn't go, but a very good first half for VCU. And Dayton, the home team, will have to regroup, score at intermission. VCU 41 and Dayton 29. Now to the U.S. Bank Sports Report. VCU looking for its sixth straight win. They've taken this raucous crowd here at Dayton out of the game. They're doing what VCU does. They're limiting threes and they're turning teams over. What's the difference and what does Dayton need to do to make this a ball game? Well, Dayton's got to put their aggressive caps on and they got to get aggressive and attack the basket. They did it at times, but VCU did it the entire game. On the defensive end, they were aggressive. On the offensive end, they attacked. That attacking style led to some good looks from three. And, and they're shooting it really well from that three-point line is VCU. That's not their M.O. for the season. But as of late, they've been a much better three-point shooting team. They're getting it done in this one. How much does Dayton miss Trey Landers? They miss him not just his production, but his leadership. And, and right out of the shoots, Dariante Jenkins, who was three for, three for four from three in that first half, um, goes for another one. Four of five from that three-point line. Five of six overall. 14 points right now for Jenkins. Mike Sell had a good first half, just a little bit heavy on that floater on the baseline. And VCU. Yeah, Mike Sell, even with that miss, is 6 of 8 in this ball game. He's been a real bright spot for Dayton. Marcus Evans, and again, repeating a theme that we brought up in the first half. Just too easy. There's nobody on that back line for Dayton. And they're now down by 17. They just leaded the game so far for VCU. They were up by 16 in the first half before Dayton cut it to eight. And, and Cunningham good. denied. Yeah, very good interior defense by Santos Silva inside that time. Isaac Van, wide open, no. Santos Silva, another offensive rebound. As they had eight second chance points in that first half. Well, that's the eighth offensive board for VCU. Dayton with just three in this ball game. So they've been the aggressor. All the numbers show that, that the Rams have been the more aggressive team in this ball game and it's paid off. That is their game. They play aggressive. Santos Silva. And good ball movement. And another wide open look. Yeah, and Dariante Jenkins made that little gesture. He's, he's dialed in. Yeah, he, he put the phone up to his ear and he is dialed in in a big way. And there's a strip, and this one is becoming a blowout. alley -oop. And Isaac Van finishes off the Dariante Jenkins lob, and it is a 51-29 VCU lead. Talk about flat out of the locker room. I said to you at the break, I didn't love Dayton's body language. They're getting hammered here at home. Well, no other way to put it, partner. Uh, Dayton's playing a lousy game right now. And in the body language, we just watched them go to the bench, and the body language was kind of sulking a little bit, heads down, and here's the last two bucks. Look at the ball movement. Inside, out, and then one more reversal of the basketball for a wide-open jump shot from three, and they're getting good looks. And then on the other end, Jenkins, who's been a superstar in this ball game, knocking down threes, getting steals, Beautiful alley-oop assist this time. The assist goes to Isaac Van. VCU playing with confidence. They're playing aggressive, and Dayton's been on their heels. And, and let's go back to what you said about Trey Landers. You're like, how, how much do they miss him? I know I know. Anthony Grant, when, when asked, was like, oh, no, no, we're just going to close ranks. We're going to be fine. But the last game I did here, I asked him about Trey Landers. And he said, he's our emotional leader. He's our hustle guy. He's efficient. He makes the right decisions. He leads with his effort, and he lifts everybody else. Well, he's in an arm brace right now, and they could certainly use him. They need an emotional leader right now to pick it up, and nobody's doing it for Dayton. His brother is a lineman playing football at Ohio State. Trey sort of has that football mentality, which they need. If you're, if you're going to play VCU the way they play this season, you, you better play with some physical toughness and be able to deliver some. And, and I, I believe that Trey Landers, is, his absence is hurting more than, uh, than anybody would like to think on that Dayton bench. Looks like he's handing out some gum or some candy. 
hand out some guts right now. 10-0 run for VCU out of the locker room. They were up 12 at the break. And it's a runaway right now. And this VCU team, let's give them some credit. They're peaking at the absolute right time right now. Well, their calling card is defense, and there's Mike Sell. He's been Dayton's best player by far. Yeah, he's... Day He's VCU, been the best, but no VCU's question. calling card is defense. They limit teams to 62 points per game. They have not been a particularly good three-point shooting team, but that's seen an uptick in the last few games. They're 8 of 16 from beyond the arc today, shooting just 30% from the field. And there is another offensive rebound for VCU. You're, you're Anthony Grant. You're, you're livid right now. Where's the effort? Yeah, because th th that's rebounding is about body position and effort. You know, those 50-50 type plays, Dayton's just not making, and you, and you can see it in the body language. And sometimes, you know, let's give VCU credit. They're playing with such aggression. They've got Dayton back on their heels and wondering if they can compete. Where's Josh Cunningham? First team preseason All-Atlantic 10. Where's OB Toppin? He's averaged 20 and 7 rebounds the last five games. Toppin has just two points tonight. Yeah, and, and you'd hate to say you have to rely on, on young guys, but... But this is a young basketball team. Toppin is just a redshirt freshman. Jordan Davis is a sophomore. Crutcher is a sophomore. So a young team. And sometimes young teams don't respond when they get punched in the face like they're getting punched right now by VCU. You see Mike Rhodes, a uh, VCU coach, he, one of the, the rare guys who likes to play a lot of people. He'll go 11 deep. He thinks, and I agree with him, it creates great morale. No one's disgruntled. Guys show up ready to compete day in, day out. Well, and they know that you earn playing time, especially on this end of the floor when you're playing defense by hustling. Well, that's a big time a move. That, that's the talent that has some scouts drooling. He has the size. He didn't play high school basketball, meaningful high school basketball, until he was a senior. And he was only like 6'2 as a high school junior. He's 6'9 now. Well, and they, they need some big plays, and they need some transition buckets. And they need this guy to get going, but he traveled in a hurry. Jordan Davis, and we talked about he's been hit or miss this year. Doesn't have a field goal tonight, just one point. And yeah, the mental part of this one, they're getting worn down by the constant pressure of VCU. 13 it, turnovers. It, and I mentioned, this, this VCU team's been good from the get-go defensively with effort. And it's offensively where they're really rounding into shape right now as they come into the home stretch of the season and then into the A-10 tournament. And they have a chance to win the regular season title. It's a team that could win the tournament. And offense is where they've made huge strides in the last month. Mike Sell. Rebound Santos Silva. VCU's best win was a road win at Texas. A little bit extra there because it was against their former coach, Shaka Smart. And that looked like a travel a jump stop. Santos Silva held and ball and it goes the way of Dayton. There, there is one guy that's not been playing on his heels. And it's, and it's this guy right here, Mike Sol, who is who has come to play, has played with confidence on both ends of the floor. I give him credit when the rest of his team seems to be kind of playing off kilter. He's been on. Mike Sells, an Ohio kid, grew up going to Dayton basketball games. But Dayton just looks indecisive when they get in their half-court game. Not quite sure how to react to this VCU pressure D. VCU, they like to, as they say, deny and disrupt. Long three by Davis, no good and the rebound away to Corey Douglas. VCU by 19. They won the first meeting between these two by five. It was tied with just under a minute to go. Inside, Marcus Evans. He's been their best player. Two-time first team conference USA at Rice. And when Mike Rhodes came here to VCU, Evans came with him. We've seen way too many as far as Dayton's concerned, those types of plays. Just muscle plays inside, easy buckets right at the rim. Evans gets another one where they're just a more aggressive, more physical team. And boy, for, for Anthony Grant, what, what do you tell a team? Do you lay into them? You, you, you're at risk with a young team. They just shut down. This is a tough one, puzzle to solve. 
VCU the aggressor. Evans getting it done inside VCU, way out in front. College basketball on NBCSN brought to you by Autism Speaks. Visit AutismSpeaks.org slash coaches for more information. And by Golden Corral, your choice rules. VCU rolling here in Dayton by 21 in somewhat of a shocker. Just the margin so far. Well, and it's it's not been a terrible shooting night for Dayton. They're shooting 50% from the field. They're 14 of 28. But but listen to this. 28 attempts for Dayton, 41 attempts for VCU because of turnovers, because of offensive rebounds. The aggressive team is just getting way more opportunities. This isn't about not shooting it. It's about not being aggressive. And that VCU pressure has bottled up the Dayton backcourt. Jordan Davis done very little. Crutcher, who's normally outstanding, has done very little. And Cohill hadn't done a whole lot for Dayton. And you look at Dayton has had some major comebacks. The most notable is at GW when they were down by 17, end up winning that game. Do they have that kind of magic in them? Well, I, I, this is a better basketball team in VCU than GW is right now, playing and peaking. Two on the clock and a long three, finally. But Jalen Crutcher. That's a start. That's how you get it going. That's how you get the crowd back in. Need a few more of those. Again, VCU goes to its bench. Nine players averaging 14 minutes or more. Isaac Van. Good look, Vince Williams. He's long and another offensive rebound. But just Obi Toppin didn't box out. That's double digits now. It's 10 offensive boards. It was Douglas who snared it. And Dayton, with, Dayton with just three. I mean, that, that number alone tells you who's playing with an aggressive mindset in this ball game. And, and VCU is making good decisions offensively with the basketball. That's a good pass right there. And Toppin seals his man. A good and, block out that time. Yeah. Fundamentally right on. See if they can get a run. Had a 9-0 run in the first half. Cut a 16-point lead to 8. And right now, they're down by 18. 13.40 to go in the game. Mike Sell, nice spin, drive, and he'll shoot a couple. The foul was on Isaac Van. Mike Sell brought his game and has been aggressive. A very comfortable at the line, 81% free throw shooter this season. It was Van second, team second here in the second half. As soon as, soon as I say he's 81%, he misses, right? That's how it yeah. goes. You saw Anthony Grant, head man, arms over on the Dayton sideline. He was an assistant to Kansas coach Bill Self last summer on the FIBA under 18 USA team that won gold led by Cole Anthony, who's the son of former UNLV and NBA standout Greg Anthony. Can't afford that, but they get a break. So Mike Sell misses two, and Mike Sell yeah, that's, that's is an 81% yeah, foul shooter. <laughs> That's how it's going when it's when it's not going well, and they with with the rebound, the Rams are on the line, and and for Dayton that's a big break because that was a deflating drip to the line by a normally good free throw shooter. But look at that on the ball defense. Good pump fake, Mike Sell, excellent play, and, and Mike Sell. He's just had a really good feel. He's been the one guy that's made good reads against this aggressive defense. That time, a little ball fake, you get the defender closing too hard, and he goes right by for a floater. Crowd wants it. How badly do the Flyers? Vince Williams. Freshman out of Toledo. Step back three, Evans, no, and rebound Jordan Davis. Crutcher, three. Now they're out of their seats. VC 
to you. Calls time. Check. Dayton down by 13. Jalen Crutcher leading a second half comeback for Dayton. They're on an eight nothing run over the last two minutes and 15 seconds. Well, in transition, this is step back three and Jalen Crutcher, who Anthony Grant told me is the best pure shooter on this basketball team, getting it done here in the second half. And this crowd, home crowd, sold out looking for something to get excited about and now they're back into the ball game. Two threes from Crutcher. And down by 13. There's a turnover. Crutcher knocked it loose. Davis, and he's fouled. Dariante Jenkins is whistled. Well, and the pressure, it's, it's Crutcher who's made the two threes to help him in this stretch is the man that gets a hand on it. Davis has a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know, Crutcher was running that right lane and gonna set himself up on that three-point line again. And Davis is going to get two free throws here, but maybe not a bad idea to kick it out for another open three. This was expected to be a tight game. Odds makers had Dayton actually favored by a point, point and a half. VCU led by 12 at the break. They came out of intermission on a 10-0 run, so they were up 22, and Dayton has sliced that in half. And now you, you've got a crowd that's going to support you. And even though you're shorthanded, you can find the energy from the building to play defense. They got to play and get some more stops here if they're going to close this thing more. This place is ready to pop. They need a stop. They don't get it. What a drive by Dariante Jenkins. He is a good-looking player. What a game he has had because he's been the answer every time VCU has needed to answer a little run for Dayton. Inside, top and spins, and he's fouled by Santos Silva, who thought he had a block. That is Santos Silva's third foul. And that's big because he's a, a force inside. Going baseline, Jenkins is the man of the hour for VCU. Still out in front, 57-44. Dayton with some time and with some momentum, finally. Well, they finally got some things going. It was Jalen Crutcher who knocks down the three. Then look at the good ball movement. Excellent decision by Mike with a floater. And then how about Crutcher again? The backup three in transition. He's three of four from three and 11 points now. And then we just finished before that timeout. Obi Toppin going baseline and he'll be at the free throw line. But offensively, Crutcher's the guy that's brought some aggressiveness and energy to this team offensively here in the second half. He's, he's finally a one-two punch to go along with Ryan Mikeso, who has been really, really good. Obi Toppin, 75% foul shooter says the game has started to slow down for him. He's averaged 20 and 7 his last five. He's had some dunks that went viral. A video where he played some summer basketball in a New York City gym with Carmelo Anthony and CJ McCollum. Oh, he's he is a talent and and he is developing. He's a, he's a young raw talent with a lot of, not a lot of basketball life in him. Uh, previously and so here's another skill this this crowd now fully into this ball game Cohill rejected and they're gonna call a blocking foul on Ryan Mikesell and uh, Cohill's, Cohill. Cohill's young in fairness but yeah. he looks just a little lost out there and indecisive and, and he went Right into the teeth of the defense one-on-one. -on -one. That's when you go in and you kick the basketball. You have plenty of time in the shot clock. So he went and attacked the shot blocker and got it blocked. And then they get Michael with a blocking foul here. And uh, Anthony Grant went, went off the went off that time after he heard that, that call. And uh, and I have to agree with him on that one. I thought that the, the offensive player generated the contact and leaned into the cylinder of the defensive player that time. Mike Sell's first foul. Dayton's starting to pick up the defensive intensity. Defense, 
11 minutes to go. One on the shot clock. Mobley had to fling it and top him with a rebound. The defensive rotations that time, much better for Dayton. They were quicker to help. They got to the spots. They cut off the drives. A little more energy now. Obi Toppin with a pretty spin move. And he is more than a dunker, isn't he? And now that lead is inside of 10. And this crowd feels it. VCU led early in the second by 22. And wow, Jenkins missed the throwdown. Cohill into the teeth of the defense. And this time he finishes. First bench points of the game for Dayton. And it is on now. Dayton is trailing by only seven. How about this move by Obi Toppin? Well, you see why scouts look at this great raw talent and go, wow, not just a dunker, but some finesse with a move. And then on the transition bucket one-on-one, -on -one, this time, Cohill gets the bucket to fall, and now a single-digit lead, a crowd that's back into it, and feeding their team with energy each time down. I'll tell you what, though. Was that a spectacular miss, Doug? By by Jenkins down there last time. It doesn't count as any bucket, but it was spectacular that he tried to throw it down on three people's head. 16-2, Dayton run. Cutting what was a 22-point lead down to seven. And a whole lot of time left. And boy, that defense is in your face right now. And th this is the advantage of being at home when, when you feel like you're just getting a little bit tired you can grab some energy from the crowd who's all on their feet and helping you out oh there's a steal jalen crutcher down to five we're going bananas here at dayton And a foul. Well, Deriante Jenkins fouled by Ryan Mikesell. Watch the, the defense. Crutcher, who's been outstanding in this second half on both ends of the floor, gets the steal and the run out to close this thing to five. In the second half, Crutcher playing as advertised, like one of the best guards in the Atlantic 10. Dayton winners of four of five coming in. VCU five straight. Evans on the drive. And the ball belongs to Dayton. When Evans wanted a foul, Mike Rhodes wanted a foul, and, and there looked like there was plenty of contact down there. Hey, we can hardly hear ourselves think right here. And, and, and it's hard on the officials and the players out there. I, he was waiting for a whistle there and the, and the ball goes out of bounds and goes over to Dayton. Dayton is getting the job done defensively. That is what is key this comeback. Uh, getting, you, you're never going to close a 22 point lead by just out shooting somebody. That, you you got to get extra possessions. The VCU did it in the first half to build the lead. Dayton has done it here in the second half to close the lead. Defense and the three ball. They're shooting it better in the second half. Top it. Oh, he had an idea for a left-handed dunk, and it slipped out of his hands. Yeah, he lost it on the way up. Evans on the drive, and nearly a three-point chance. Well, Toppin had not to watch him lose the hand on the way up. He, he had it gripped and was going to throw that down. Made a good decision and just lost it. Just lost the grip on the way up. That's when you just throw it down two hands. Toppin leads the country in field goal percentage. What happens when you when you dunk as much as he does? Came in with 62 dunks, shooting 68 percent from the field, and he's going to take a little bit of a blow. Josh Cunningham replaces him. And Anthony Grant, a little teaching moment right there as he's coming off, talking to him. 
he, he has a great personality. He has a chance to really be a star, Obi Toppin. His dad remains his hero. His dad plays semi-pro ball, or did, in New York City for the Court Kings. And his nickname, Pop's nickname, was Dunker's Delight. Well, he, he, he passed it on for sure. Seven-point lead for VCU. See if they can get that crowd back up. Crutcher inside, beautiful feet to Ryan Mysell. And a foul. And Crutcher's now playing at a high level. I really like the decision. He, he had a chance to shoot a contested three and said, no, I'm going to pass on that and attack the defense. And when the help comes over, when Evans comes off of Mike Sill to help, he makes a beautiful pass. That was just great decision-making all around by Crutcher. Dayton has made seven of its last nine field goals. And he's having maybe the game of his life. Now with 21 points on 9 of 12 from the field. And the lead, which had been 22 earlier in the second half, is only four. Just barely got it across in time. And even with the trap way out at midcourt, they hustle back and recover, find their guys to defend in the half court. 13,000, and you can hear them here in Dayton. And Isaac Van turns it over. Dayton basketball with a timeout on the floor. And VCU needs it. Can they stop the Dayton run? We'll find out. Atlantic 10 earlier today, Duquesne at home over George Washington. Duquesne is a dangerous tournament team, and Fordham. Nice win on the road at Rhode Island. Last night, St. Joe's Davidson back in North Carolina, and Steph Curry, who I think has revolutionized the game of basketball with the emphasis on shooting and skill, came home, dropped new uniforms and sneakers on the Davidson Wildcats, and then went into the crowd after they beat St. Joe's 80 to 72. Really a special night back at Davidson. Yeah, an unbelievable moment, and, and you love to see Steph giving back to the university where he had such an impact and had such an impact on him. Back in 08, Davidson a 10 seed behind Curry's lights out shooting with all went all the way to the Elite Eight. I remember people saying, Yeah, but does this transfer to the NBA? Yeah, it did. In a big, big way. Step back three. Crutcher, no, and rebound away. Who's got it? Cunningham. Did he get a timeout? He did. Yes, he did. There's the hustle. Rich, there was a time in this ballgame in the first half where Dayton couldn't get a 50-50 ball. The difference is hustle, grit, determination. Dayton is doing it now, and they've closed the lead to four. VCU could move into a tie with Davidson atop the Atlantic 10 standings with a win today. But if Dayton wins today, and then this is a tall task, and then at Davidson on Tuesday, they're right there. Yeah, this, we, we talk about championship implications, and they're very, very real. They didn't seem real for about 25 or 30 minutes of this ball game. that the Dayton was even a contender, but they've, uh, they've really turned it up here. Obi with a three. Are you kidding? That is not his game, but it is right now. And Dayton is down by only one. He, he's now, we say it's not his game, but another turnover. Toppin, that's just his ninth three-point attempt this season. But he, he's made five of them, so I guess maybe it is his game. And BCU's coming unglued. A turnover. Dayton with a basketball down only one and a chance incredibly improbably to take the lead if you're flipping around who doesn't on a weekend uh, Dayton was down by 22 points early in the second half and they have a chance to go on top well we showed that graphic they have come back from 17 for a win against GW earlier this season but when we were looking at that the first time, I was thinking, man, that's a tall task against a VCU team that's really hot right now. One of the best arenas in the country, sold out, better than 13,000, ready to explode. 
And almost a turnover. Toppin saves it. And, and, and he was well say, defended. The officials are letting him play a little bit. It's been physical. That no call right there is very consistent with the no call down on the other end. I don't have any problem with that. The fans here don't like it. Dayton was down on the road 28 to 6 by 22 at GW earlier this season. And he raced that and came back for a win. There's another offensive rebound. That time by Malik Crowfield for VCU, but it was batted out of bounds by Dayton. Well, Crowfield went to, to kick the ball back outside and didn't recognize he was under the basket. He hit the back of the backboard, and that's out of bounds. This has a chance to be a game they will remember for a long time here in Dayton. It's a great college basketball town. It's kind of the only game in town. Kind of a mini NBA look to the arena with all the intensity that you love in college basketball. Again, Dayton with a chance to go on top. Oh, great defense that time. And great hustle by Mike Sell to get it back. Crutcher for the lead. Oh, in and out. This place would have come off the hook if that would have gone down. And it was a good-looking shot. It was an inside-out three. And, and, this, and Crutcher came up a lane after that last shot attempt, and so he intentionally fouled there to get out of the game and get to the bench to have it looked at. You see him limp out of there. Something down on that left lower leg, and he's having it attended to by the medical staff on the bench. And they can't afford to not have him out there. He's big, been the catalyst. Big spot for the guy taking his place, Cohill, the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. Second chance here for VCU. Mobley on the drive, blocked. And that ball out of bounds belongs to Dayton. You mentioned it just a bit ago, Rich, but the, the level of defense intensity for Dayton is up about five notches in the second half compared to where they were in the first half. And that has really been the catalyst for the energy in the building, the comeback, all of it, as they decided to play D. I asked Anthony Grant yesterday, how would you describe your team? He said high character, high character. And that shows up in a big, big way when you're down 22, doesn't it? Okay. He's back. Jalen Crutcher, the man of the hour here in the second half for Dayton, is back up off the bench. Dayton has not left led since the 15-minute mark in the first half. 15-02 was the last lead, a chance to take the lead on this possession. Jordan Davis, here's Crutcher, six on the shot clock, Crutcher, inside, oh my goodness, OB Toppin, and Dayton leads it by one, and what a way to grab the lead. How nice is it to know you can just throw it up anywhere and it's getting thrown down if that guy's going baseline. Dariante Jenkins misses, but Michael Sims with the offensive rebound, and VCU will reset. 4.20 to go in the game. VCU continues to track those offensive boards, and, and it's... And Williams is fouled by Obi Top, and let's give you another look at one that will be replayed quite a bit. As the clock is winding down, attack and lob, and the attack by Crutcher Gets the attention of the interior of that defense and takes the attention off of Obi Toppin. Williams had to address the driving Jalen Crutcher. And Pop is watching back in New York City. Old Dunker's delight came out of his seat on that one. Obi has 13 points. Playing a great second half. And there is an offensive foul on Vince Williams. So now he's doing it on both ends. And what a coming out party for a freshman. You're going to see a lot of in the next couple of years. Remember, Topham had two fouls early. 
in his ball game and had to play maybe a little bit tentatively. He's been aggressive the second half. He just picked up another one a minute ago. But now with three fouls, how about that defensive position taking a charge? Smart play for the redshirt freshman. Showing tons of heart right here. Roy Evans is inside the grill of Jalen Crutcher. Cunningham. Crutcher. Topping. Another three ball try. Almost. In and out. Rebound away to Marcus Evans. A good job by Douglas of blocking Cunningham off and preventing him from getting that offensive board. See what kind of character VCU shows after blowing a 22-point early second half lead. Three and a half to go. Evans, beautiful drive and oh, a finish great. with the left hand. Made a great decision and accelerated. He saw that seam and just went hard at it. Hey, this is the game we thought we were going to have. We didn't think we Love were going to have two halves like this. We thought it would be this way all game long, and we've got it. Evans with eight. Three and a little bit to go. VCU now by one. Five to shoot. Davis on the drive. Oh, block. Nice wow, block. that's outstanding defense. Vince Williams. Jenkins. Michael Sims. Good finish. And that's that is VCU in a nutshell right there. Get a block, get out and run on the on transition, get your points. VCU showing poise after having been down, responding with a couple of buckets. Now a three-point lead. Crutcher, good drive. Floater, no, and rebound away, Vince Williams. And Wait, Crutcher got up. Yeah, got a blame again. We saw him leave a moment ago and go to the bench and then re-enter the game. The lower part of that left leg. Watch, he, he elevates off of that left leg and then, then comes down. They need him to be able to finish if they're going to have a chance. He's been the catalyst for them all second half. Dayton came from 22 down early second half. Led at 60-59, but VCU showing some toughness. Boy, they show poise here in the last little bit as, as they took the crowd out of a little bit. And a good read of the defense here by Evans, who gets the drive and hits the bucket. Then the other end of the court, look at the help defense come over. This is a beautiful block by Corey Douglas that leads to a transition opportunity. Dariante gives it up, and Michael Sims finishes. And that's a, that's a big turnaround and settled this VCU team down just a little bit as they reclaim the lead. So Mike Rhodes, he was a heck of a player in his own right. Two-time Division Three National Player of the Year back in Pennsylvania, Lebanon Valley. His coach was Pat Flannery, who had some good years at Buck. Now, Evans on the drive and the finish. Boy, he has come up big. Boy, not, not only over the on-the-ball defender, but Toppin was coming over to try to help. And the rim protector, he shot it with a beautiful lob over the top. So Crutcher's out of the game right now. And we should say he... When, what they did, they were they were looking at him. They rolled out his calf. They're pushing his toe up toward uh, up toward the the upper torso. So you would assume he has cramps in that left calf, and he elevated off that left calf. And man, they got to get him back. Look at the drive here. here. Here's the on the ball, and then look at the help defense. That that is just a beautiful touch shot, and a tough one needed by his team. Six nothing run for VCU after they had fallen behind by one. Evans now with 10, Jenkins leading the way with 19, and Mike Selt shooting one and one. And he now has a new career high, 22 points. Ryan Mike Selt. He's, he's been getting it done on both ends of the floor. He's 9 of 12 from the field, 2 of 3 from 3. And, but but with very strange for him. And they get the ball back. But Mike says one of four from the free line. This is an 81% free throw shooter that's one for four. Everything else is going great, but what he's normally very good at. They get a break right there, and they'll have the basketball. They need to capitalize. Down by four. And there's a foul on VCU, and Cunningham will shoot one and one. A foul on Isaac Van. 
And Cunningham, a 58% free throw shooter, so not necessarily the guy you want there. Uh, trying to help Van. On the first one, got a piece of the ball. Second one, got forearm. Have to have him. Two of three today. Make it three of four. Big free throws. 58% foul shooter for the year. Been in a bit of a mini slump. First three months of the season, average 15 a game. The last month, shade above nine. Standout player at Bradley who transferred, and he's beloved here as a team leader, sort of a heart and soul guy. And they're down only two. Buck 50 to go. What a good one here at Dayton. And Dayton will apply some pressure to VCU. A little taste of their own medicine. As they now back off and play man-to-man -man in the half court. Evans with a basketball. He's a cool customer. And he's played well the last few minutes. Dariante Jenkins with a drive. And scoop, no, rebound. Santos Silva, and he's fouled. So again, the offensive rebounding, second chance opportunities coming back to haunt Dayton. 14 offensive rebounds for VCU. And, and when Dayton goes back and looks, if they end up losing this ball game, you can point directly to all of the extra possessions that VCU has had and, in this ball game. And look, OB has a world of potential. But they look at the film, you're going to see. You need to block, block out. out. Shot goes up, you find your guy, and you body him up. And, Look who's back, Jalen Crutcher. The thing that Jalen Crutcher has brought to the offense for the Flyers is a recognition that the way to handle pressure is to attack it. So when they go after him, he just tries to go right by him, and that's been good things. Santos Silva, no. 56% on the year. And so now Dayton again with a chance to tie or with a three, take the lead. You see that defense extended out. And again, it, where, where Crutcher's been so good is when they've pressured him that far from the ball, he's gone right at him. There it is. Five on the shot clock. Davis. Oh, my! He'd been quiet all day, and now he puts Dayton back up by one with a deep triple. This place is lit right now. Isaac Van, and that'll be a blocking foul on Josh Cunningham. And VCU will shoot one and one. And, the, and it is so loud in this building right now. The players, they just have to keep playing because you can't hear the whistle. The little bit of a drive and attack, you saw the help defense coming over for just a minute as Isaac Van stepped to, to cut him off. There was an open three shooter. First three of the game for Jordan Davis. Now Isaac Van. 82% foul shooter. Tied at 66. I'd like to say the Funk Hall of Fame is here in Dayton. Think about Funk fans. Oh, yeah. Lakeside, fantastic voyage, and we're on one from Dayton. Zapp and Roger Troutman, Dayton. More bounce to the ounce, and we have it. <laughs> and the Ohio players. Think about fire. We're on fire right now here in Dayton. VCU with a one-point lead and 33 seconds to go. Jalen Crutcher, hounded by Marcus Evans. 12 on the shot clock, inside to OB Toppin. Up against the backboard, no, and counted and a foul. Wow, it wasn't pretty, but he found a way to get the job done and Dayton's back up by one. Well, he hits it off the bottom of the backboard. The bottom's in. The back of the backboard's out. He hits the bottom of the backboard and then aggressively goes and finds the basketball again amongst a bunch of arms and hands. Now with a chance to get free the old-fashioned way. Subway choice moments. Just a few minutes ago, the drive and kick, Crutcher. 
Kicks it over to Davis, who hits a deep three and nothing but the bottom of the net. 13 second half points for Obi Toppin. 15 for the game. 75% foul shooters. Two of two today. Not that time. Dayton leading by one. 10 seconds to go. Evans on the drive. And the finish. What a drive. Five seconds to go. Not calling timeout. Davis. And he's blocked. Out of bounds. 0.4 seconds to go. VCU leading by one. And the officials will go over and check the clock to, to make sure how much time is left and determine whether you can catch and shoot. Boy, look at how big is this play by Evans. He drives into traffic, muscles the ball up on the backboard and gets the bucket. That was a big time take by Marcus Evans. You know, let's watch as the, as the whistle blows and the arm goes up. And they're they're going to have more than .4. I, I, I think that, that they're going to probably give him close to close to a second left. So enough time oh, for that's catch enough, and enough shoot. Enough time to catch and shoot the basketball. And so we'll, we'll have to see what they determine. They're looking at the same thing we're looking at right now. You, you be the judge. Do you, do you give him one? Point two, do you give him, what do you give him? I don't know, I don't know if you're thinking what I'm thinking. Lob to Obi Toppin. Oh yeah, if you, if, 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 if let's, let's go back. That's a big, big time play right Ev there. Evans is fierce. Marcus Evans, described by Mike Rose. He brings a com competitive edge out on the floor. He's aggressive. He, his personality is the personality of this team. We just saw it. He was fearless. Point seven on the clock. Point seven. Dayton trying to. I like. I, I like it. If you got a play that you've been saving, where you run a screen for Toppin, and you throw it up there and let him throw it down, this this is the this is the time to pull that one out. Trying to complete an amazing comeback. They were down 22 early in the second half. Now down by one with a basketball and point seven to go. And if you're Dayton, if you're Dayton here, you, you, you've got to set solid screens and expect VCU to switch those screens so nobody comes clean if they can't get over the top of them. Here we go. Inside, and that'll do it. They were unable to get it in clean. And a heartbreaking loss for Obi Toppin and Dayton after a spectacular and gutsy comeback. Trying to get it, and, and Dayton, I'm certain, wasn't supposed to have two offensive players right next to each other. And that ends the game as VCU guts it out, and Evans makes the go-ahead bucket. VCU goes to 19-6, and 10-2 and two in the conference. They're tied atop the league standings. Dayton 16-9, and, and now 8-4. and four. College basketball continuing with a women's 8-10 doubleheader starting with Duquesne taking on Rhode Island 1 Eastern right here on NBCSN. Coming up next, it's college hockey, Wisconsin against Notre Dame. Final score, VCU 69, Dayton 68 from Dayton, Ohio. Rich Lerner, so long. After a 2-1.